Gaza Strip, West Bank, Golan Heights. West Bank considered occupied territory. I'm not sure who's it's occupied from, but it's still considered occupied territory um, with a population of one and a half to two million Palestinians living here. You know the story, settlers, settlements, borders, um, <clears throat> water, Jerusalem, all those issues that happen over here. The Gaza Strip, no longer occupied by Israel, still considered to be occupied, although Israel doesn't, is not there anymore, shares a border with Egypt and with Israel. Hamas virtually um, uh, set up their own government over here, a radical Islamist, uh, jihadist, genocidal regime uh, that is functioning here in Israel's southern border. The Golan Heights, also considered by international law as occupied territory, occupied from Syria, annexed by Israel in 1981. 40,000 people live here, about 20,000 Jews and 20,000 Druze who are uh, active members of the Israeli society. Um, the Druze in the Galilee are conscripted and serve in the Israeli army. The Druze in the Golan can opt in. The Druze in the Golan also have an affi affiliation to Syria, so they're now sitting on the fence. Okay, and we'll talk about the Druze later on, and I'll explain to you why that is. <clears throat> it's actually perfectly makes sense, and it's perfectly okay that they're sitting on the fence, because that's part of their, of their tradition. But the Golan Heights, does not have the uh, um, it doesn't have the hostile population like there is in the West Bank. Um, it, it was conquered from a country that started two wars against Israel, uh, yet still considered occupied territory. And um, the demand of the Syrians in negotiations is that it is completely returned as a precondition to the negotiations. Not as a result of the negotiations, mm. but as a precondition to the negotiations. We can negotiate on the, on the status between the countries, the legal representation, the diplomatic representation, the economic ties, normalization. All those things are negotiable. But the border, the final border solution is not negotiable. That's a precondition. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, proportions. Mm. Proportions. Okay, Israel in the Middle East. Israel is depicted in international media as the Goliath versus the David, the Palestinian David. Israelis see themselves more like the David and the Arab world as the Goliath. Proportions, very important to see. And again, here I point out, in one place, you can see four countries. Something that's really astonishing for people all over the world to understand the size of this place. Um, and yes, size does matter. <laughs> this quickly, get to this, not important right now. How were these borders even set up to begin with? In the beginning there was the British Mandate. The British Mandate is already, the borders of the British Mandate already established in 1916, in the middle of the First World War. Sykes and, Sykes and Picot, the British and the French uh, uh, foreign ministers are sitting in an office in London and are carving up the Ottoman Empire. Part of it will be French, part of it will be British, part of it will be shared. <clears throat> but generally speaking, the British get what will become later on uh, Jordan and, uh, and Israel. They get also uh, parts of Iraq. Um, they uh, very quickly, because of deals that they signed with the uh, Bedouin chieftains in the Hijaz, in Arabia, in their war against the Turks, they give the two brothers, Abdallah and Hussein, give Abdallah a state here, will be called the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, and they give Hussein a state here, in what will become Syria, and he goes to Damascus. The problem is, when he goes to Damascus, he meets French people there. And the French are telling him, like, who the hell are you? Mm. He said, well, I'm, I'm Hussein Hashem. I'm, I, the British gave me this place. And, they, you know, pretty much they start, there's a war, there's, the, the war <coughs> breaks out, um, uh, he's no match for the, for the French, the French pretty much kick him out. Part of that war, by the way, is results, this is 1922, uh, results in clashes here, because when you can't fight them, then you go fight the Jews, and uh, Tel Chai and some of the actions that are taking place here are, are also uh, very famous in Israeli historiography, but then he moves from here to Iraq and he becomes the king of Iraq. 
And so the, Hashem, the Hashemite family is ruling both Jordan and Iraq. And, and he's in Iraq until 1954 when the Ba'ath, Ba'ath regime, or the Ba'ath party, overthrows the Hashemite kingdom in Iraq. And the Ba'ath party later on, Saddam Hussein, yada, 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 etc. So uh, the British offer both, you know, if, you, if you t people talk about how Israel is a colonialist power,